Mandingo was a cop. My arch nemesis. The one who took it all from me. Was trusted with security for Colombians. This is a sick, sad world we live in, I can tell you. But the fact was, Mandinga being a cop is what led me to here, to this floor, in this building, among all these corpses. Corpses I forced to their own deaths. I can hear them. They're coming for me. At last. Anyway, as I was telling after I learned the truth about Mandinga, I was off for some time. In my time in South America, I read the news. I knew about the search, block, the heroic Colombian special forces that hunted down and killed some of the narcos that terrorized their country. And I was naive to think most people would have been honest. I went back to my lair. A dirty, cheap room in one of Medellin's many low-class neighborhoods where people lived in tiny spaces, confined, born into a life with no opportunities, turning to crime to get one more meal each day. Can you blame them? I know you can't, but I did. The past couple of days, I'd been moving around from shithole to shithole, avoiding staying too long in one place. The cartel was on my tail, as far as I was concerned. That's most likely what kept me alive up to this point. Once I accepted the reality of having to kill a cop, I started with a plan. Again, I was building a house by starting on the roof instead of the foundation. A thousand ideas ran in my head, a thousand scenes, a thousand potential traps. After the fantasies calmed down and reality invaded me, I realized the obvious truth. I should learn more about Mandinga before even thinking about how to put a bullet in his head. And so I did. Armed with his name and the mental picture I got the only time I saw him, I searched for him in the stealthier ways that I knew. I went to a bar. Rumors said it belonged to the cartel. I just waited, patiently, until I could feel the proximity of the dawn and stayed there like a suicidal vampire. The first night a few drunks said his name and made other references to the cartel, so I know I was in the right place. Still, it took a few days to learn anything of value. Cuando gustes la unidad 204 se hará cago, someone said to another. Esa es la unidad del Mandinga. Esto todo en orden. Mandinga, unit 204. I did understand that. And so I did more research in safer places. Unit 204 was a special group of the Colombian police tasked with certain special crimes, such as arson. Of course, dealing with fires was the firefighter's job. But I thought, what if what's burning belongs to the cartel? And I answered, only one way to find out. During the day when the bar was closed, I visited the place with a gas can and a lighter. I don't know how much damage I did. I like to believe it was quite a bit, but it probably wasn't. So I moved on, next day, to another target. A whorehouse. In the morning. A lot of people saw me entering. A lot of people knew what I was doing. It didn't matter. I had an escape route, and that was all I needed. After a week of giving this special light to Medellin, I knew someone in the cartel would demand Mendinga to do something before I try to hit in one valuable place. How can I be sure? Well, I couldn't. I just had to try. And I'll admit it, I was tired. So tired. It felt as a last resource. A last attempt at giving me some closure. So I decided to get this building. It was an open secret. Everybody in Madeline knew this is a place where some capos from the cartel meet. Well, it was known they meet every single Wednesday to discuss money issues in the company of prostitutes. So I decided to attack on Tuesday. Less scrutiny. My surveillance revealed five men in fixed spots. Two in the main entrance. One in the back door. Two more inside. At all times. I decided on the back door. I just went straight ahead and hit the guard with a hammer. He didn't see it coming, I mean. I smacked him from behind and 
dragged him inside. Slowly, but certain, I was the hunter. I searched the first and second floors. There was nobody. In the third and last floor, I found two men. They were having their fun with a girl, young. Maybe 15 or so. I didn't say a word, I just shot them both. The girl ran screaming and I ran behind her to the first floor. Then I took cover behind a wall and waited. I heard the men from the main entrance. They were saying something in Spanish. I don't know what. But I did understand the fear in their voices. I let them come, and when I felt them close enough, I left my cover and shot one of them in the face. The other one shot me in the chest. The body armor stopped that bullet. But I lost my footing and fell to the ground. I felt panic. I thought I was done for. I thought I would never get Mandinga. I thought everything was for nothing. In all this, I thought as I shot blindly. A second later, I realized the only gunshots I was hearing were those that came from my shotgun. I looked at the man. He was dying. He couldn't even hold his gun. Took all the air I could, went for my can full of gas, started a fire in the main entrance, retreated here up to the third floor. All those curious people outside who heard those guns surely didn't have any reason to stay quiet. Some had to see the fire. With some luck, I thought, though. Mendango will come with his special group. The group can and will kill me, sure, but I only need one bullet to end this. For another episode of this story, tune in next Tuesday. Meanwhile, watch another video and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Check out the description for our social media and sleep well, if you can.